Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith, and we are going to look at the power and precision of the trim window. The trim window is a function that's a little bit buried in Premiere Pro, but it does give you a lot of precision, a one frame at a time editing environment. What you might not know if you are using the trim window that it's more than just ripple and roll edits. You can actually use a trim edit and you can switch between all of these while you still have the trim window up. A couple of things about versions. There are so many different versions of Premiere Pro. If you go all the way back to the beginning of time to now, I can't cover all of them. The trim window is in most of them. There are updates in the newest versions of Creative Cloud. The keyboard shortcut that used to work, the letter T, currently does not work. The letter T is now for the type tool. To get into the trim window, it's Shift T to bring that up. If you're not familiar with which keyboard shortcuts, go to the edit menu on Windows or the Premiere Pro menu on Mac and look for pre uh, your um, Premiere Pro keyboard shortcuts and then just search for trim. Let's go have a look at this edit. So I've got an edit here. I've got two clips. I've got New York's Finest uh, on the horse. Thanks again to uh, Dutch Digital Dude for these clips. And then we've got some people walking across the street in Times Square. So this edit I want to fine tune. And you can see we've got an edit right here. And just so everybody knows what we're talking about, this red edit is a trim edit. It leaves a hole. This is a ripple edit, so it, it trims it but brings everything over. And this is a rolling edit. I've got keep, uh, I have tutorials on each one of those. I just want to make sure you understand the roll, ripple, and trim edits before we get into the trim window. Now, you, wherever your playhead is, when you invoke the trim window, it's going to jump to the nearest edit point. And at that point, you'll see your display change. So I'm going to hold shift and tap T. And you can see immediately we have a rolling edit down here on the timeline. We have a new display up on the top with the time code of both of these. And on the left and right side, there's an out shift and an in shift. Basically, this is the ending or the out point of the horse clip, and this is the beginning clip of walking in Times Square. And if you move the mouse into the middle area, you'll see the same tool you get down here, which is the rolling edit tool. So if I click and drag left and right, I'll be doing a rolling edit. But if you want more precision, you can click on these buttons here. I just did a one frame rolling edit, rip, uh, rolling edit to the left, which cut one frame off of the horse and added one more frame of the walking on Times Square. It didn't do a ripple trim, it did a rolling edit. If you move your mouse to the left, you'll see it will change to a ripple trim tool and a ripple trim tool. But now I, I don't have the precision that I have over here. What if I wanted a ripple trim left minus one frame? So I want to take off a frame of the horse and I want to move this clip to the left. Well, you might think that you can't do that, but you can. You'll notice down here we've got our rolling edit. If I hold Control Shift or Control on the Mac and tap the T key, you'll notice that we now are selecting only the left hand portion of this trim window. And now when I click minus, we just did a ripple trim left of the pre preceding clip. I could also invoke the same keyboard shortcuts. Now we're doing a ripple trim the opposite way. So I'll go five frames that way and I just ripple trimmed that way. If you hit it again, now you're gonna do a trim edit. You can see it's changed down here to a, a red trim. So if I minus one, I've got a hole now and you can see that I've got this black. Now you probably won't be using the trim window for something like that because there's no benefit in having two windows up where you can't see what's going on. So if you use it that way, great, but I don't really see the benefit of that. So I can still uh, put a plus on here and now I've put those back two together. What's also important here is that while this trim window is up, everything that I'm doing here, I can undo if I have a button available. So in my button editor, there's a revert 
trim session button. So if, if I bring that down, if I click on this button, every single thing I've done while that trim window is open is now gone, it's removed. And that's there for sometimes, well, it, that was a customer request because somebody went into the trim window, they did a lot of things and they realized they, they kind of screwed the edit up a little bit. And, and they're not even sure how many times they clicked on something. They just know before they went in here, it was much better. So click, revert, pops you out. That's a nice one to have. Again, that's a newer feature, not in older versions of Premiere Pro. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is that you have a, a, uh, a larger value. So this is, let's go back to our rolling edit. And this is going to trim this backwards. And it's also control shift left. And you can see these control shift right. This value here is set on five in the preferences in the trim preferences, and it might be in a different preference in an older version of Premiere Pro, you could actually change this. So if I wanted to, I could have this at eight. Click OK, and now you see the number eight is available. I can't ripple, I can't do any more trims on here, because you'll notice when I click, it says trim media has reached the limit. And what this is warning me is, it's, it's telling me I can trim away from the horse because I'm in the end of the horse clip, but I'm actually at the beginning, or I, I don't have at least eight frames of the walking across uh, Times Square clip. I probably have one. No, no, I don't. I've reached my limit on that. So the trim window in all trimming in Premiere Pro does require that you actually have a little bit extra called a head and tail. So wherever your edit is, you actually have more clips that are available uh, to, to trim from there. The other thing you can do is, while the trim window is up, you can tap the up and down arrows, which will jump you through the edits and you still have your trim window session available. So I could jump to this edit, minus eight on here, or plus eight, plus eight. I can also roll, ripple trim, uh, anything while I'm doing that. And again, I can change this to a ripple trim. You can see it over here on that side. I'm trimming the tail of that and moving it all over there. So. If you want precision, the trim window is really there for you to have that kind of precision. And it's also that two up view that helps you align things. A lot of times uh, people will use this to do a kind of an edit where you need to see where something is going from one clip to the next clip. And you can't see that in the timeline, but in the trim window you can. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. You wanna support us a little more? Join us over on Patreon for as little as one little dollar a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best.